This is uh, Richard back at you. Uh, today we're working on a 04, 05 model uh, 480E with a 60 motor, uh, four wheel drive. Uh, he wasn't having any issues with it, but it's a high mileage unit and he's wanting to go ahead and uh, get it freshened up before winter come in. So it's uh, pretty muddy. We're gonna get this thing tore down and see what it looks like. I think it's a farmer's vehicle. And this is just your stock torque converter. Uh, it doesn't look like it's been rebuilt before. It's still got your factory sticker on it. Now they do make uh, two different versions of this converter. Uh, they make uh, one that's really shallow right down through here. And then they make another style that's uh, flush right through here. It don't have this dip in it. Uh, they will retrofit depending on uh, what year you have. Uh, the little lighter converter. So, but you can see here, uh, this thing's probably been leaking for a long period of time. A lot of mud and just you know, all kinds of condensation up in there. Now this is one I like to take apart because it hasn't been into. This is what I enjoy here. <coughs> and we set off our input speed sensor. Uh, being as the four wheel drive, it'll have the output speed sensor on the transfer case. So. Now being that this is a later model, uh, it'll have the rear cooler line. So this one here lubricates from the rear to the front instead of front to the rear. Uh, you notice they had a spot here for a cooler line, but they didn't put it in there. So the pump's different. Uh, there's bearings, all kinds of stuff in here that is physically different. Uh, this is one tranny. Uh, you don't want to mess up on because uh, the lubrication circuit will really bite you. So this is one of them here. And, uh, you notice you have a short and a long. This long one reaches inside and goes into the center support into a seal down in here. If you put this short one in there, uh, the fluid just falls to the pan and burns up all your drop chain. So, your kit will come with new clips and new O-rings. You can just clean these up and reuse them. Uh, just putting the seals and new clips in here. Why are you slipping that over? He's got that bad boy 4R100 already built, ready to go for me to put in. Looks pretty gorgeous over there. Just needs a paint job and she'll be ready to go. But back over here. Looks like we got a few uh, case uh, bolts messed oh, up in here. We might have to reheal coil or something. It's like they put metric or standard bolts in. Too, so someone's had the pan off yeah. well they probably got strip bolt holes in here and they uh, uh actually they put uh helicoils in there and put the holes is what they did oh, gotcha. As you notice they put helicoils down in here oh, but they yep. didn't put metric helicoils they put standard helicoils so that's why you have to put standard bolts back in these areas yes sir is what they did. Now this does have a deep pan on it. You can identify it by these dimples on the filter. That tells you there that it's a deep pan. Uh, the shallow pan will not have these on here. You do have your EPC solenoid and your PWM solenoid here. You have your pillow switch here and both your A and B shift solenoids, your transmission temperature sensor. This tube right here lubricates the rear case bushing and it'll lubricate the rear tail housing bushing on a two wheel drive. So that's why that's the only thing that is there for. Uh, 
actually it's got a little tiny hole in here. You can just clean it, spray it, it just sprays that real tiny little stream. Now this tranny here is capable of really high pressure. So um, you can, if you, you get somebody laptop in it or got a hand pod that's programming and stuff like that, they can physically break this tranny all by themselves by programming too high pressure. This tranny will make over 350 pounds of pressure, uh, but it only should operate about 200 at the most, but it'll make that. So you can break it just by programming wrong. Uh, they had issues of high pressure and uh, we put a kit in here uh, to, it's kind of a blow-off valve that we mount in here that goes right here we'll have a plate we'll drill a hole through here and you'll have a little bleed orifice right here with a spring and, and a little piston uh, that way if it ever has any spikes of pressure uh, it won't break the pistons or blow the seals inside the tranny but, I mean this thing has issues with that uh, this is our early model pillow switch here uh, this got little switches in here fluid uh, presses on these and tells you what gear it's in you can feel them click when I push on it just little bitty switches yeah you can see it actually mm -hmm. the reflection changing you see it press it'll, it'll click, it'll click mm -hmm. too when you push mm -hmm. on them. so now these are your accumulators here there's one in here and here I'll go ahead and take it apart and show you. Now some of the early models uh, actually had a, a valve in here that moved back and forth in here. It's a little piston, but it didn't have no springs on it. Uh, it just looked like a coated uh, valve. Now you want to check these for any type of cracks or anything. Make sure that's not cracked. That could be just a mark, but these do crack. You want to check them really good. The plastic ones are really good pistons, though. You don't have to throw them away or get metal ones or anything like that. They really work good. But you just want to look for any type of cracks or make sure the pin ain't wore. I can't see there, but I said a lot of this stuff we can't see tearing it down. So when we clean it up, we uh, look at it a lot differently. Tremendously. Mm -hmm. yeah. Same way with these feed holes here and these check balls. Uh, they're pretty rough on these uh, plates. You can see how they kind of beat them up pretty bad. But believe it or not, this plate's still really good. So uh, you can go in here and uh, get you a shift kit and it'll tell you which holes to drill out. I hate to tell people which holes to drill out and then they drill the wrong one. So I don't even want to get into that part of it. So drill at your own risk. Drill at your own risk. <laughs> now, this training here has issues with the converter lockup too. So I'm going to show you something right here. This valve right through here, you can buy a Sonex valve that has a Teflon ring made around the, that you put on the valve. It's kind of like a piston ring. Uh, you take it out and you can put a different spring in here. They make two different springs for different lockup feels, a little bit firmer, or a little softer, uh, but that's a must on these two, replacing that valve because this is a PWM valve uh, and you can't block it or anything. You have to physically use it. For the people out there that don't know, what does PWM stand for? Uh, it's a pulse width modulator. Uh, the computer pulse the converter clutch on where you can't feel it. 
instead of just putting it on firm where you can feel it like a shift. Okay. I kind of like it like a shift. Uh, the Sonex valves do uh, work really good. They do make them feel like a shift, so they work really good. Thank you. Now here you got your uh, engine braking band servo right here. It's inside here, I'll show you when I get it apart. Now, on this one here, you notice we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight check balls. There's no check ball here. Don't put a check ball there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Do not put a check ball there. On your end's magnet and the other side's the not. The other side's not, that's yeah, funny. funny. I think they made that one backwards. I think they did. <laughs> <laughs> now this is your reverse servo right here. This supplies the reverse band. Basically, this is a 400 three-speed with an overdrive unit on it. Basically, is what it is. Uh, actually, the 400 clutches, the 400 planetary gears, a lot of bushings, and all that stuff will interchange in this unit. So, now this is a rubber seal here instead of a Teflon. That's what I like about these two here. They're all rubber. Uh, they seal a lot better than the early design. Physically, let me let me show you this here real quick. There's really no way to check your band adjustment on your reverse band right here. Uh, so what I did is I have an old cover uh, that I took and drilled a hole in right here. And uh, when I put this together, I can push through that hole and I can tell my band adjustment. By putting it together and air checking it, you really can't check it really well. So it's better to just be kind of no cover and use a cover. Man, that's a good secret. Yeah. You better write that down. Now this is your center support bolt. Uh, the 4L80E is really long. The 400 uh, is half this length. So don't put a 400 one in here. Don't put a 4L80E one in a 400 either. <laughs> so. Now, I wanted to show you, if you notice, these bolts are hollow. This one here is hollow. This one here is hollow. This is your fourth gear clutch here. This is your intermediate or your direct. I'd have to look. And you have your loop circuit through here too. So. I'm telling you, pulling out was a chore. Yeah. We get these in here all the time where this connector is full of fluid. So this one here isn't, but Ben, this is going to fit back in the field. We have to put a new harness in it no matter how you look at it. We can't take a chance at any leaks on this unit because it parks in dirt, it drives in dirt, it stays in dirt, and you'll never see a leak. You see this, how fluid just poured out of this bolt hole? Now, remember me talking about how we would put a new seal on this bolt here, and then we always silicone that bolt too, just in case this seal don't hold. That's one reason right there. Because people don't think there's pressure around these bolt holes, bolts, but there is. So we always double seal it. Put a new O-ring and some silicone. That way it does not leak. No one sure. Yeah. It's happened to you once, you learn from that one time and you don't let it happen the second time. We're really good about that.
It's like they changed the fluid on this thing, like not too long ago because it's got like dirtier fluid in it than ports and clean fluid. But now this is a little later version unit. Uh, they've changed this plate here a couple times. They've, uh, they've updated this pump. Let me show you the, how to identify it. Now remember me talking about the front and rear cooler line on the tranny right here? Uh, this is how you can identify the pump. See this groove right here? This pump right here is designed for that rear cooler, loop cooler line. If you put uh, the other earlier pump in this and it don't have this loop circuit, this tranny is doomed. So they do make a retro pump that looks like this and you have to plug a, you have to plug something here on the side. I can't remember where's it at. Let me find it. Where'd it go? Okay, maybe if it was this valve here, yeah. No, it wasn't either. I was trying to find that valve. I think it was this one here you might plug, but uh, they do make a pump that's retrofit both years. You can buy this uh, remanufactured because uh, they want these pumps back uh, anytime you take them apart or get a new one, they want the old one back so they can rebuild it. Pump looks really good. Very little wear, still all the bluing on the gears, but still we'll put a new gear in there anyway. Because pumps, uh, the pump clearance is only about three thousandths, so it don't take much wear uh, to get any clearance in there, and then you have converter drain back and all that type of stuff. So you wanna really check all your surfaces and make sure, I gotta look at this really good because I'm fixing to order parts to this unit right now, get off the, uh, this video. Look here, looks really good. That fluid just, is it like tractor fluid, you think? Oh, it's I don't just so right. blood red. Yeah, that tractor, some of that tractor fluid. Really good. Yeah, I didn't know if they had put any in it or. I'll try to wipe some of the dirt off for you people that don't like the dirt. <laughs> yeah. well, that's nasty stuff, huh? Mm -hmm. Pretty, kind of. Yeah. Now, this is your overdrive unit right here. Your planetary, your, your engine brake clutch. You want to always check your washers. Uh, all your gears, make sure there's no chipping or anything like that, no wear patterns. Uh, check your shaft where your bushings are going to be running. Uh, this tranny here, this overdrive right here, right here, is really small. So almost all of these we have to replace. Even though the planetary looks good. This little gear right here just is just a lot of force on it. You know, you can just see how shiny the teeth are. Mm. You know, there's just been a lot of load on that gear all, all of its life. So we we'll need to put a new drum in here. Now they've changed this sprag assembly up multiple times right here. So anytime you go changing parts on these units, you better be careful. This is one of the ones that'll get you. I think you went to, and yeah, then we right. started talking about it. Yep. <gasps> and then you air checked it. I said this tranny hasn't been apart. Uh, he said it was working fine. He just wants it freshened up for the winter. Overdrive clutches. Uh, Got a lot of wear, just not burn up. Looks really good. We always get a lot of bushing wear here. You can kind of see this bushing is already flaking off right through here. Uh, what happens is uh, the shaft right here starts rubbing down in here, and you can see where it started already ruining the drum down in there. Mm -hmm. See, and that's a really common problem. Uh, this is a forward clutch in this drum. 
uh, it'll start slipping forward because these seals right here apply the forward clutch to that hole. See, that sets down in there like that. Okay. But once this starts rubbing, it wears all kinds of ruts in there. Uh, so. He got lucky. It was on the urge of going down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's going to lose his clutch right here. Uh, this is the forward clutch here. It's not burned up yet. Still looks good. Still actually has some life in it. Uh, got a nice steel uh, clutch hub. They put a cast one in here too that just goes stud, but this one here has a nice ring to it. It's, it's a good one. So. Now, this does have bonded pistons. Uh, the seals are physically made to the piston. Uh, where the earlier had aluminum piston, you could change the seals on either on the piston. So you just got to remember them upgrading this still didn't cure the problem of breaking the pistons and stuff on high line pressure. So you got to remember you got to put a kit in here that stops like high line pressure. So. High line pressure correction. Put that down. Yeah. Uh, it's a really a nice. Yes, sir. Same way here. Uh, this feels like it has the good sprag. Uh, it has a spiral snap ring on it. Get it around here to that groove. It should come off. That's right. Come on, turn. I got some new ones over there. I just want to get around there to that. You kind of got to get that to that little notch right here. That way that'll pop out of there. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's how you got to do that. Now this already should have a 34 element sprag in it. And, and it does. So the main thing you want to look for wear here. Any type of chatter marks. Like that. This thing looks really nice. Just has a shadow right there. I thought it had a chatter mark. It looks really nice. Now, if you notice there's a wave in the third gear drum on this thing, and you you have to keep it in here on this tranny, even though it's a four wheel drive and all that type stuff. If it's a race car, you can leave it out. But if you take this thing out and you put it in reverse, you're gonna wish you never put it in reverse because you have to soften the hit on this third gear clutch for reverse. So if you leave it out, get ready. You're gonna have a harsh reverse. So we have to keep it in there. Now we can make the third gear shift firmer and it won't affect it but uh because it's got two circuitries to apply this clutch you got a reverse circuit you got a third gear circuit so always leave the wave in or the customer's going to be bringing it back not like in reverse the easy brake band is a lot bigger in the 480 than the 400 uh but this band will actually interchange you don't want to put a 400 in there because it's actually half the size. Uh, but most of the time we do a tranny brake or anything like that, we throw this band away anyway. We don't even use it. So it's only for engine braking. Now we do have a four clutch uh, intermediate set. And we do have a, a wave back here again and this wave has to be put back in if you don't the customer will be bringing it back uh, shifting too firm race car you can leave it out but we just did a race car and we had to put it back in so uh, it varies on uh, on units to cartooning and all that type of stuff so Now this is that bevel snap ring that we talked about. This is the same snap ring that goes in a 400 and a 480. Uh, it's flat on one side, beveled on the other. Make sure you put it in right with the bevel out because if you put it in wrong, it's coming out. And if you put it down here, and I see this happen a lot too, 
uh, this snap ring right here, they'll put at the bottom and then they'll put this one on top and this thing will jump right out instantly. So don't make that mistake, real easy to do. Now we have our center support right here. Let's see if I can find that long bolt. And here's your long cooler line. Uh, that comes in here and sticks in the side of the seal right here, just like that. So it's in the tranny like that, this sticks out the side. You put your cooler line. If you put that short one in there, it's only gonna stick to about right here and that oil is gonna fall right to the pan. All your tranny's gonna burn right up the first time you get out and drive it around. So. Don't do that. No, we've had shops learn uh, from yeah. that, mis that mistake right there. Now this that snap ring right here. Uh, uh, this snap ring right here sets down in the case right here, right here, like that. And where it goes is, it goes underneath this center support just like this, just like that. So you don't want to leave it out. If you can't figure out where it goes, that's where it goes. It's real thin and flimsy. All it does is support that. So, this is your reverse band. Starts usually wearing on the tips, stuff like that. Always put a new one in there. Rear case, thrust plate, and washer. Now we do upgrade these, not so much this one here, but a lot of our race car stuff will switch us over to a roller bearing and stuff. Just depends on what they're using them for. Sprague assembly. They make a couple different versions of this, some with no legs, some with legs. You gotta watch it there. Same way down in here, some of them, the ones that don't have legs, they have a ring that goes in here that holds them up in position. Where this don't have that ring, it has legs. So that's the way to, to look at that. You also want to look at these pins are bad about walking. These pins are bad about walking. When they do get up and walk, what they do is they take out this plastic washer right here. And they'll come up right here. We do just tap them in and we'll come in and TIG weld them right here on the corners where they can't move towards that washer. And it, it, so... Same way with your sun gear. If you notice, this sun gear has four grooves in it right there. That's for the rear oil from that cooler line to go through and to lubricate forward through the tranny. Don't have a two. I was going to show you the four hundreds have a two, and the, the early four lady es have a two. The rear cooler line style have a four. So this tranny here, when you go to change the bearings and swapping parts, that rear cooler line stuff uh, gets into effect really big time. So I'll show you some stuff down through here. If you notice them, them little spots right there, you can see that? See that? See that? That's what lubricates this bearing back here and this bushing, okay? And if you look here, this bearing right here, even this washer has places for it. It'll never turn that that pressure going off to that bearing. Oh, See, it'll cool. always have one of them open. See? Well, if you look at that bearing, it's the same way. It has these three notches. Well, 400 has no notches. And the early model for our Lady E has no notches. So if you put a no notch bearing on top of here, you're gonna burn this bearing up and you're gonna burn this bushing plum out of the tranny. So. Now let's move forward. Now our oil is gonna go through these four holes and go farther forward. Now we're gonna go through these bushings right here. And if you notice these bushings have grooves in them. If you put bushings in here that have no grooves, like a 400 or the four, early 4L80, 
you just cut off lubrication circuit going forward. It has to have these notch bushings. That's how the oil moves forward. So, there's some pretty critical stuff on this thing here. Enjoy taking one apart that hasn't been messed with for sure. I don't see it a lot. Usually there's four or five people have been through these units and we have to straighten them all out, but this is gonna be an enjoy to build this one here and straighten it out for him. So, if y'all need anything, give us a lot of precision directions.